Hi, good morning. It's Simon here. How are you? Today, in today's live stream, we are going to be doing a live guitar lesson on Caged and why you might need that. You might not have heard it before. It sounds like a bit of an old-fashioned concept, I think, maybe nowadays. People talk much more about pentatonics and all that sort of stuff, but I think it's a super, super useful thing that you can use, and it actually answers a lot of questions around the guitar. So, let's start it straight off. Uh, if you have any questions during the lesson, please do let me know, and if you're watching on repeat, I'm happy to answer those questions in the comments as well. Now, what you can see here is I've got a C major. And what I've done here is I've color coded the, the chart so you can see that the C major chord here, open C, we've got C, E, G, which is the first, third, fifth, first, and third of the chord, right? So when I play that, that is a C major. Now, the first thing, often I get asked, uh, how do I put together some little runs inside chords when I'm playing sort of a sort of standard cowboy chord, sort of, you know, if I played C to G, for example, and I played... You know, how do they come up with that stuff in the middle of there? Well, how they come up with stuff in the middle of there is actually pretty straightforward. What they do, you've got C major here at the bottom, right? That's a C. C major is a chord, C. And then in there we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So you can see that the scale is inside the chord, if you know what I mean. So if I lift up my second finger here, that is a C sus2, and then I can resolve into C. All right, now, that already is a pretty useful thing. So, sounds familiar, right? You've heard that 10 million times, I guess. Now, if we move that C chord, and we're gonna move it up here to F, imagine we had the same thing in F. shape here with now an F, right? Now, C, F, G. So that's the first kind of useful thing about the caged thing where you've got a chord, you realize how it interacts with the guitar up and down the neck. There's C. The same shape will apply here at the 8th fret. F. The guitar is drowning out your voice. Okay. Thank you very much for telling me that, Trav. Typical good guitarist. Always play too loud, right? Anyway, so what you can see there is that you've got C major. How good is that, that you tell me and then I can just fix it? I love the internet, it's gonna catch on. So, we've got C, so I'll repeat all of that stuff. We've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And always on 11, always, always on 11. Uh, so, that's how that is useful, right? So there's your F, there's your G, all right? And the same thing will apply. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, rather. Okay, now that leads me into the second thing, which is this whole cage thing is actually pretty useful because it means that, you know, you can reverse engineer chords, right? You know, so if you see a chart and it's got a C6 in it, that's not a chord that everybody knows, probably, but you've got one, three, five, one, three. And if you know that C major thing inside the chord, there's the six, right? Because we've got one, two, three, four, five, 
six. So you can see the six of C major is an A. So if we play our C, there's an A in there. We put our pinky here. There's a C6, right? If we need a C major seven, which you might not know, you think, well, so here's the seven. C major seven. And it also helps when you know when you're trying to come up with different, slightly different versions of chords that are really familiar to make it sound a bit more interesting. So instead of playing that C major there, you've got a G here. There's also a G here, right? So why not just play that one up there? Still a C major, but just you've got an extra G on top of the chord, if you see what I mean. Alright, so that's already answered. I reckon a lot of questions that I get, you know, so how do I, if I've got a song, it's got C major, A minor, G, and I'm playing something like that, and I want to make it sound a bit more interesting, right, so I went from C, I played C and then it hammered on two, three, five, six. There's a C and then A minor. Same thing applies. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. It's in key, right? And then G major. Open. And then back to C. see already that if I then follow that pattern and I put an F, A minor, but not really A minor anymore, it's D minor, all right, and then G shape, and then back to F. Okay, so that is a first actually really useful thing about this. Now let me just scroll down here. Uh, where is it? Wrong button. There it is. So I'm going to scroll down here. And now what you can see here is that this is an A shape bar chord. All right. So we had C shape. You know where this is going. So we've got caged, right? So C and then A is here. So C, A. Now, the cool thing about this is what it allows you to do is if you've got an extended part of a song which just basically has C in it, let me just go back here to the comments, uh, C and then C. Now, I've got C, I've got C, C. There's three major scales which all lead off this C here, the third fret on the A string. So what it means is, I'm playing here. C. Okay, C, C. So you can see already that the cage sort of system has allowed me to know all the notes from the open to about, where are we, to the seventh fret. And so it just means that I'm playing C. Right? So if I've got an extended section, which has just basically got C in it, let me just put something in. A looper here.
always play something which is going to match the chord. And that's just from knowing that this is C and this is C. So that is the A shape. Now, what you can carry on doing is you can carry on going up the neck. So let's just move up the neck here. Now, here we go. This is the eighth fret where this black C is here. And you've got this G shape bar chord. Now, hardly ever do you see people playing that because it's awkward as, right? It's just not a sort of thing that you're going to be going to that often. How I tend to use it, I tend to use this sort of thing. So you can see that this is like the, the top half, if you like, of that G shape. Then I've got the, again, you've got the scale under each time. Right? So if you've learned how to play G major in the open position, G, A, B, C, D, E, H, G, follows, the whole thing always follows. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Right, so we've got C here at the first fret, C at the third fret, now we've got C at the eighth fret. So what that means is that, again, let's put our thing on. perfectly in with the chord all the time um, and you it just means that you're going to have more control and kind of more mastery mastery of the fretboard so that you know even if I was if I had my rhythm guitarist here doing an open chord and I'm playing rhythm guitar as well See what I mean? Like it's a pretty useful thing. So if you're playing with a mate and he's playing a whole bunch of these sorts of chords, you can then you can be you know the cage thing and you can work out all the other chords. So because this is C, so if I move it up, obviously that's D, E, F, G, right? So that's where this stuff gets really really useful. Okay, let's keep moving up. So we've had C A G in our caged thing. So if we move it up here, then suddenly you, you, this is probably one more people recognize as an E-shaped bar chord. Now, if you ever learn any Jimi Hendrix stuff, what you'll realize is that he does this a lot, where he's got his thumb on the, the root, right? And then his top three fingers on the top of the chord, and then nothing really on the A string, all right? And you'll hear riffs like this. Right? Or all that kind of stuff. Alright? One, two, three. Here. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. So we've got five, six, flat seven, eight, nine, or three, flat, um, minor third, major. Right? So if you can come up, you know, because you're here like in, um, in Little Wing, uh, no, Little Wing. Little Wing? Yeah, Little Wing. Um, now this is going to be a G. doing this kind of caged vibe we've got the top of the chord he goes to a six sus four major third one right and then a minor and it always 
always got the chord. You know what I mean? Like, so even the minor chords. Right? And then G. F, C, D. I can see that. He hits a D there, and then he does this little run. What's that? It's a G shape bar chord. It's a D. This is a D. The root is a D, right? That G shape bar chord we were talking about before. So these are like really practical applications of actually what is kind of just not a very sexy way to learn the guitar anymore. I don't know why it's not that popular anymore. It's how I learned the guitar in you know the 1780s or whatever it was. Okay, so that's why that's useful. And then finally, we've got a D shape chord here. You can see that I've got whoops. D shape chord. So here's our root. Five. Root. Three. Right? So you've got that. Right? So we've had C major. Let me just switch that off. We've had C major. 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 Right. So what that means is, as you run these, you know, see, see, right, so you can see that that's going to be a pretty helpful thing to help your guitar playing. And then if you also know the notes in the middle, relative to what they are, like so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, wherever you are, and you know, you hear licks like that all the time, I think that's a... Uh, Maybe a Mark Knopfler one. Right? Just played a, 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 a sus4. A sus4. A sus4. Right? And the chord underneath is an A. Right? So he's really good at the cage thing. He's really good at the guitar full stop, but but you know what I mean? Like the way you're playing A Right? Over the A. So uh that is basically in a very, very short lesson what is going on with the cage thing. Now, do we have any questions? What would be your suggestions in breaking this down to learn it in steps? Excellent question. So I would learn each of the patterns and each of the scales that sit within those patterns. I will actually put a few charts together on the Patreon and I'll put a, a link in the video here so you can get to them easily. So the first thing I would say is this is C. You probably know that, pretty much everybody knows that if you've played the guitar for more than 10 minutes. And then I would kind of think about, okay, well, I've got a, my open scale pattern there. Right? So, three, zero, two, three, zero, two, zero, one. And you can get a freebie here. If you name the notes as you go, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, it'll help you learn the notes as you go, right? So, that... C. Here's C. C D E B C. C D E B C. Like all that stuff is freely available on the internet, right? You know those patterns. You can just search C major patterns on the on the Google machine and hey presto, right? So so I would similarly like I did here with the looper, right? I've got C. I would just literally practice going. So 
is the idea to learn that pattern from the root note in the chord? Yes, that is the idea. Because then, as the chord changes, if it went to F, for example, I could do the same thing, but just up here. And it's going to sound more interesting, right? So we've got still a C shape, but I can do the same thing because the guitar is a patterning situation, right? Right, let's actually put two chords in, right? I'll put C in. So, I can do the same thing, right, F. C. Exercising like that, I would say exercise like that in one shape first and get the idea of C all over the neck. Then do the same, get the idea of A, the A shape, all over the neck. Get the idea of the G shape all over the neck, the E shape, and then the D shape all over the neck. And then you'll start to see that, okay, right. So then that's how that's going to work for you all the time. Now, the thing to also one last thing actually to think about is that where you have, you know, like the D shape that we spoke about here, what you actually can start to recognize is that this is the same kind of shape, right? Oh, I'm glad to hear you. <laughs> I'm glad hearing you getting it. I know it is a bit, um, what's the word? So it can be a bit cloudy, this whole cage thing. But if you start to kind of go, okay, well, let, I'm just doing the same thing here, it's actually pretty useful, right? Because I find it's not just not taught that well. Because if it was taught well, like everybody would use this all the time, right? Instead of your, you know, I'm going to do a minor pentatonic sort of thing. Which is cool as well, right? But if you've got those major shapes everywhere. Like suddenly you sound like, you know. It's, it's like, it's like when you do the pentatonic thing, it sounds like you're only playing in one color, right? But if you use the sort of major scales and combine them with your pentatonic riffs, it sounds like you're playing in Multicolors, right? What they call that? Technicolor. You know, so like I could play C, pentatonic lick, caged kind of lick, pentatonic lick. cool hey anyway what I was saying just before was that once you get the hand once you get a handle on this this is D this is the C shape but it's the same chord and you can start to see that actually this is the same kind of the same shape right 
so you get this kind of bigger shape and you'll 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 get the hand C major right and you start to see how they all just all link up and it's just like somebody put lights on the fretboards for me <laughs> you know like oh I can play that one that one that one that one that one you know you want to see your name um, so basically the D and C shapes are the same and then your A and your G shapes are kind of the same too so like this is C this is still C but you, this bit in the middle is the kind of triad from there and then a bit in there so you start to see that right makes sense excellent I think that is it my coffee's probably gone a little bit cold because I've done so much chatting um, are there any more questions I'm gonna is learning pentatonic a must yes absolutely like you don't just learn one thing and go, I've got that. All the pentatonic things. Oh, I should tell you with the pentatonics. I was only going to do 10 minutes, but here we are half an hour later. Uh, so DJ Cannon. Uh, pentatonics are actually awesome because they match each of those chords in the C, A, G, E, D thing. Right? So if I take, for example, a G shape chord. Right? Now what you'll recognize is actually, so this is C major. A minor pentatonic is the relative minor. Right? If you didn't know that, always three semitones low is your relative minor because C major and A minor have the same notes in the same way that D major and B minor have the same notes, right? So if you look at that, it actually looks a bit familiar because you can start to go, there's your first position of your minor pentatonic, right? Right? Okay. Then I move to an E shape, second position of the minor pentatonic. Then I've got uh, so G, E, D, third position of the minor pentatonic. There it is. It's in the chord, right? Fourth position. In the C shape, fifth position, it's in the A shape. So, learning all these relationships between the major scale, the chord, and the pentatonic, like that is a lot of stuff to learn. And I think I've got to say, I find that often I have people come for lessons and they're like, I want to learn the mode, this mode, or that mode, or whatever it is. And I often ask them, Do you know your major scale all over the neck? Because that is actually a more important thing, from my point of view, to learn before you start worrying about Phrygians and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can see that there's a massive advantage to knowing all that stuff. And then realizing that if you, here we are. I can play a pentatonic style lick, lick over the top of the over the top of your chord, right? I just want to make sure I learn in the right order. I don't know, I think there's a right order. Uh, I just think you need to know all these things, and it is tempting to kind of when you first start, or even if you once you're into it a little bit, it's like I'm going to learn everything. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry about it. Uh, there is a lot to know, right? But what you've got to try and do is just put your blinkers on a little bit and go, okay, but I'm in the next three months, I'm going to learn all the pentatonic shapes up and down the note, and I can play them in, in common keys, like in, you know, A and E and stuff like that, but also in, you know, uncommon keys. Like I still hate playing in B flat and stuff like that because I spent you know years and years learning A, E, those sort of common keys, but it, it's it's really really important to because there's so much stuff now available it's not like in 1985 when I learned my first pentatonics or whenever that was 1983 um, uh, you've just got to 
focus on learning one thing at a time because it is tempting. Oh, look, the bright, shiny thing. I totally understand that. But do try and to get that first. Uh, it is about knowing where it starts. You're absolutely right, Trav. So I think getting really good at pentatonics is an integral part because there's so many things that, so many riffs that are basically pentatonic. Like literally every single famous lick is pentatonic, right? You know, whether it's Layla. Look, D minor. Uh, sunshine of your love. Right? Uh, I don't know. Zebra by John Butler. They're all pentatonic. They're literally all of them, you know. You know, with sometimes one extra note in there, like that white stripes thing, you know, basically going. Right. <laughs> e minor pentatonic right so uh, just getting a handle on one thing at a time I think is really a really useful thing you know switch the internet off or whatever switch everything off and just go okay well I'm going to learn all of those pentatonic scales in A minor pentatonic and you know you're just doing this with a metronome it's good as well and then once you get the handle handle on that, learn two. And then being able to learn, join them up. So so that if you have, you can easily move up and down the neck in between them. Right? Is, that, is it right that playing within the cage is kind of an intermediate step towards pentatonics? I think it's kind of just, it's like a, it's a, a long side thing. It's a different thing. But, you know, really it's at the end of the day, it's all kind of the same thing because if you've got A minor pentatonic, the notes in A minor pentatonic are A, C, D, E, G. The notes in C major include all of those notes. So, I guess a minor pentatonic or a major pentatonic is just a subset, effectively, of your major scale. Because the major scale is the most important thing. So you definitely have to know your major scales, but you also have to know the pentatonic stuff. The pentatonic stuff, maybe we'll do another class next month on, you know, what's more important. Should I learn the major scale or minor pentatonic or pentatonics, right? We'll do that maybe next month. Um, spoiler, you've got to learn them both. <laughs> neither are more important I'm just trying to think of a catchy YouTube title but um, yeah so I think having a good idea of that sort of stuff and knowing what key you're in and then you can go from there right thanks so much for watching have a great day I will see you in another live stream soon patreon.com forward slash Simon Morell uh, there you get two more exclusive lessons every single month um, at the silver level you can access over 3,000 charts like basically all the charts I have since I went digital um, and one-on-one -on -one teaching like this you can access there's loads of cool things you can access over there so please do go give that a visit if you have any questions at all I'm happy to answer in the comments later have a great day I will see you later all the best bye bye